Well, uh, um, welcome, everybody. And uh, this is a, a course which is an author workshop. It says how to get your paper published in the BJUI. Well, that's because uh, we hope that that's the only place that you would ever consider sending your papers. But it, this uh, will do for other journals as well, by the way, so other ones uh, that you may consider sending in your papers to. But we hope that the result of all of this will be for you to send your papers to us. Anyway, as I said, you're very welcome. This is a course. It's not just a series of lectures. And a course implies that there's information going two ways. So you will have information coming from this podium, but I want to get you uh, fully involved in what I hope will be a truly uh, interactive session. Let me introduce the speakers first of all. Uh, that's I'm me, Fitzpatrick, uh, and I'm going to just be talking about a few bits and pieces before we actually, uh, just so that I can set the scene for you. Uh, Killian Mellon who will be the second speaker, is Professor of Urology uh, in Leicester, and uh, his remit will be about uh, getting your, your manuscript prepared, but also from the academic background and um, uh, from the clinical background as well. We're all going to crisscross. Um, Professor Roger Kirby is also from London, is also going to talk about how to write an ethical paper, because believe me, uh, as I will tell you, there are many transgressions of this, particularly in the present day and age, and so that's going to be a very important part of it. Marcus Drake is consultant urologist in Southmead in Bristol, and he is uh, uh, in charge of our website. He's the uh, associate, associate editor, or one of the associate editors, but really uh, adopting a, a major role in preparing the BJUI website, and he's going to give you some of his insights into that. But before that, Hashim Hashim is going to talk about um, uh, getting your subject together and getting your paper started. He, of course, is an SPR, and so it's very important that uh, he will speak with, perhaps with your views in mind. So, just if we can get started. <clears throat> um, each of us is going to talk for a little while, uh, but uh, uh, then what we're going to do is stop, and I will go around with a microphone, and uh, later on, uh, Roger Kirby will as well. Um, the issue about editing a journal means that you get a lot of papers. And a lot of papers, thank goodness, are sent in to us. At the moment, we're getting about 10 papers a day sent to us. So this is a huge number. And obviously, if you get that, it means that the bar is being raised all the time. And so you have to raise that bar even higher in terms of rejecting and accepting papers. So our rejection rate at the moment is in the region of 80%. In the uh, investigational urology so section, the, your, uh, at the end of the, the, the scientific papers, at the end of the uh, journal, the, re the rejection rate can be even higher, up to about 95% in some cases. So these these uh, are pretty testing figures, and I, I I appreciate that they may seem to some to be a little intimidating, but actually they need not be. Because if the, your paper is of, of a high quality, then it has a very good chance, obviously, of, of being accepted. When a paper comes to me, uh, and most of the papers, like most journals now, are w of an oncology bent, so they come, and I then send it, I assign it to one or other of the associate editors, or I may choose to pick the reviewers myself. We pick two reviewers. Other journals pick seven. Uh, seven reviewers to me is completely well, I, I won't say ridiculous, but difficult, because, of course, you're getting sef seven different views, which may be contradictory. And so this can be very confusing for the person who's actually writing the paper. So what happens is these two reviews come back, and then I make the editorial decision as to whether the paper is accepted or rejected, or sent back for further corrections, or whatever we do with it. Now, one of the things that I, I look at, of course, is the subject matter. So is it a good subject? Is it interesting? Is it something that's appeared before? We, we, uh, I like to see papers that are uh, innovative and absolutely of, of major interest and perhaps field-breaking. 
So that's the first thing. So the paper comes in, and we have a look at it there, and we'll be dealing with how you should present it. How can you get a topic? Well, the way you can get a topic is by discussing it with somebody else preferably somebody with more experience than you. So let's say you, suddenly you've got an idea. If you, any of you went to Paul Lang's talk yesterday, you, you remember the word he used was curiosity. So curiosity, I believe, is a fantastic starting point. If you, so suddenly you say, oh, gosh, there's this uh, subject I'm interested in. You go to your boss and you say, what do you think about that? So that's the way to, to get your topic. Now, of course, there are, if you're doing laboratory research, it's even uh, more important that you have an idea, you're part of a research drive, you go to talk to your boss in the laboratory, and they're scientists, so they will have very high criteria and certainly will not allow any, any rather poor topic to go to the journal. Uh, the other thing, too, is that often what's a good idea is to start with a review paper. Now, as you know, I don't accept review papers off the bat, and indeed, most journals don't. But you can write uh, to the editor um, and say, this is a paper that I've written. Do you think it would be appropriate? If, would you send it for review, etc.? There are ways around that system. If it's good enough for review, then that's fine. It's very dangerous um, in this situation that plagiarism can sometimes step in. And Roger's going to talk about that, but it's inadvertent plagiarism. See, what you do is you go to the paper, and with the, with the um, online and everything like that at the moment, it's, it's terribly easy to do. And you see a paragraph, and you say, right, I'll put that in, but I'll change it later, but there it is, and you forget to. But now what you've done is you've got a paragraph from somebody else's paper. Uh, if you're guilty of plagiarism, that is, I'm afraid, a serious blot because you're not allowed to publish in any of the four major journals for a specific period of time decided upon by the editors dependent on how great the crime. So you understand? But if, if you're found out, then that's not the way to do it. But, but that's a negative side. The positive side then is that you go to the instructions in the journal and you find out what are these instructions? How can I actually uh, prepare my paper? If you transgress these again, it's less likely for the paper to be accepted. And so unfortunately, what that means is that you've wasted your time, you've wasted everybody's time, and you get a slightly uh, bad name for it because then when the next time you send in a paper, everybody says, oh my gosh, I know that this person will not be sticking to the rules. So you've got to make sure that you do that. And that's the way it's done. Now, let me just say a couple of words here before. I'm going to ask if anybody has any specific questions in just a second. One of the worst things that can happen to somebody is to get a paper rejected. But it actually happens regularly. And I just want you to know that you may think that because I'm editor, all of my papers are accepted. I've had three papers which I sent into the BJUI rejected straight off by the reviewers. And I just sat back and I said, that's life. That's the way it is. I don't mind. Well, I do mind, but, uh, but, but I have to accept it. So you mind it, and what it means is that the next time you do even better. It's that, it, in other words, a reject is uh, uh, not a slap in the face saying, go away and never bother me again. It means come back and keep trying and uh, uh, really try and, uh, and, and uh, get things going. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see at this stage if anybody has any questions that they'd like to ask, and then we'll get on to the other speakers, and we'll have plenty of time for asking questions. Now, as I said, I'm going to, in fact, go up to people and ask them to ask a question. And I see my first uh, questioner.